I'm Chew School Gaming, and in this comprehensive guide for equipment, we'll teach you the very basics about how to forge gear that enhances your commanders, but go in depth on the very best sets and equipment possible to craft in Rise of Kingdoms. If you were looking for a guide that can teach you the first things you should make, but also if you're an advanced player, can tell you here's the best stuff to make for the end game, you're in the right place. Let's get started. Hello my friends and welcome back in this comprehensive guide. We're going to teach beginners how forging equipment works, where you get the patterns, where you get the materials to go and make that equipment, and go all the way up to the very best sets of equipment in the game, moving through cavalry, infantry, archer, leadership, and even gathering sets. And if you thought you knew it all, if you thought you had everything completely understood, then you're going to want to jump ahead to the section that we've got about the accessories, which are for the very most advanced players in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, as is the case in all of our long-form videos, timestamps are included below, so you can jump to whatever the heck you want. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, then this is the right place. Consider subscribing to the channel for daily videos. We are also a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms. Let's kick this thing off with the basics. What is equipment and how does it work? Equipment modifies your commanders and lets you customize them on the battlefield, offering different stats on different pieces of gear. But buyer beware, not all gear is good for every commander. And the more rare the pattern is, the more expensive it will be to craft. In order to craft something, you need to have both the blueprints and also the materials in order to craft that item. But once you've got it, you can equip those to your commanders for huge amounts of stat boosts and effectiveness on the battlefield. I would argue that if you've got top tier commanders that are completely expertised and you don't have any equipment on them, you are falling way, way, way behind other players in Rise of Kingdoms. But there's good news, my friends. The good news is that there is really easy gear to make, and once you hit City Hall level 16, you can create your blacksmith, which is where you're going to go in and craft these patterns. It also is where you can produce materials as well. You're going to use these materials in order to do the crafting, and in this section, you can combine blueprints. Once you've got 30 blueprint fragments, you can complete a pattern um, in order to then go and craft them. Now, you're going to have a series of quests if you're doing this for your very first time crafting gear that's going to give you some introductory patterns. And the great news, everyone, about these introductory patterns is that they give a huge amount of stats and they do not take a lot of materials or time to make. The reason I mention this is that the difference between a 100% free-to-play player and a mega spender is going to be a lot smaller than you would think. In my opinion, this is a very free-to-play friendly aspect of the game because although it takes a very long time to get the materials to craft equipment, the good news is that a big spender is only going to get a teeny bit of edge over everyone else. One way that you can get edge on your equipment is that when you're crafting it, there is a small chance that you'll get something called a special talent. That's right, there is something like a 20% chance, maybe 25% chance, when you're crafting, you get a rare special talent. And as it says right over here, the attributes of that item are boosted by 30%. If it is on a commander that has the talent tree that you select. The talent trees that you can select include infantry, archer, cavalry, leadership, and integration. Or, to make that a little more clear, it is the talent tree that is in red. All of the red talent trees are the ones for which you could have a special talent. You're going to want to use the special talent on a commander that cares a lot about the unit type 
that that piece of gear is modifying. Just to give an example, this piece of chainmail gives 3% of archer stats, and we've got the archer special talent chosen. That gives us an extra 1% of stats for archers, which is really good when you think about it. 4% extra archer to attack on a single piece of gear. Now, there are a grand total of eight equipment slots that you can fill on a commander. Uh, there is head, chest, legs, boots, gloves, weapon, and two accessory slots. I mentioned these accessories in the beginning as something for advanced players because typically the accessories are more rare and cost a lot more materials for a relatively small gain. Now, if you are going in and building a set of gear for the first time for whatever kind of commander that you care about, even if it's for battling barbarians, you're going to want to focus on the materials and the equipment that cost the least and give you the most immediate gain. So you can see here these gray items are going to cost the absolute least amount of materials. They're patterns that are really easy to get. And you might even craft and destroy, craft and destroy them until you get the special talent, which brings me to something really important. When you are crafting gear, it is a long-term investment into your account, but it can be undone. If you dismantle a pattern, which can be done from your blacksmith, that will restore the materials to you, but you will lose the pattern. This mechanism of destroying things and reforging them using those materials all over again is a great way to go in and try to get the special talent on a piece of equipment that Look, you've already allocated the materials, so you may as well get some extra stats. As an example, I've got this piece of gear, the course breaches on my uh, Sundok. What I could do, since I have plenty of that pattern, no doubt, I've got 10. I can go ahead and dismantle this piece of equipment on Sundok, which I will confirm. You can see the materials are restored to me. Now I head over to Forge. I hit pants, I'll select forge, and every time I do this, it is going to use gold. I happen to get really lucky on my very first try, we got the special talent. This menu that you see here is something that you only see if you get the special talent. With this, you select the tree that you want. I believe this is an integration commander, and it shows that right over here which commanders you have that will actually get the extra benefit if you put this piece of equipment onto them. Now, I'm using this piece of gear for gathering resources slightly faster. I can get half a percent of extra gathering speed. It doesn't seem like much, but if I get half a percent here and on a couple other pieces, it starts to add up over time. We're going to hit confirm on this and we'll re-equip it to Sundok with that special talent now available to us to get slightly more gathering speed when she is the primary commander, which brings me to an important point. The way that equipment works is that it modifies the primary commander and the primary commander only. When you go out onto the battlefield and you select a secondary commander, their equipment will not apply. So if I were to use Cleopatra as the primary and Sundok as the secondary, then I'm not getting the benefit of that piece of gear that I just made. None of the equipment applies from the secondary. Only equipment applies on the primary commander. Now you may be wondering, hey Chiskul, how do I get more materials and patterns to work with than what I'm just forging in my blacksmith. If you zoom way out on your map, like I've done here, um, you can see I've selected the Barbarian Stronghold filter in the upper left. That is showing me the Barbarian Camps and Keeps, which have an opportunity to drop rare patterns and also materials. If we zoom way into one of these, we can see here this is a Barbarian Camp. It was in yellow. It's been killed recently, and there's a chance to drop some pretty solid rewards. It also shows you the patterns that are listed here. Um, these are very rare drops. If you're working on these, expect to get no more than one pattern if you're lucky, and it should probably be a green if you're 
really lucky it's a blue, and if you're extremely fortunate, it's epic, and it'll take a very, very long time. These can only be killed once every eight to nine hours, so it's a heck of a grind. The good news is that there's a bunch of these scattered all throughout the kingdom. The bad news is it's a lot of walking and a heck of a commitment, but if you're looking for something to do, that is a way you could spend your time. Another way that you can get more materials and equipment, and I would absolutely slam dunk recommend that you do this, every three days you can battle a Barbarian Keep. Now, depending on the level of the Keep, you'll get even better loot. I battle this at a level 25 Keep uh, every three days because that's the cooldown on how frequently you can get the loot that you see here. But I get three blue chests just for showing up. It is take a group to kind of get this done. You can solo it with an army expansion in T5, but for the most part, this is going to be a group activity. There is going to be some number of rare chests that drop, depending on the level of the Keep Guardian that will spawn in. And you can get the patterns that you see here. There is also a very slim chance to spawn in the Swindler Dalarook, who has a slightly different loot table, including a legendary necklace, as well as the Dark Lord's Blessing. We're going to talk about this legendary necklace uh, in a bit when we get to the accessories section of the video. Again, I would strongly recommend that you do this every three days to get your free loot. Uh, the thing that I'll say, though, is that these have a three-day cooldown as well. So pick one keep near your city that you do every three days, and honestly, like, set an alarm if you can to participate in that. Otherwise, you're going to have to kind of scan around the map, looking in at these different keeps to figure out which one is going to open at a time that is convenient for you. We've got tons of videos where we've covered this in the past. Card up in the top if you want to see us battling a Barbarian Keep as well as the loot that drops. Let's talk briefly about the rarity of equipment and materials. I mentioned before that some patterns are more rare, and there is a rarity scale. Gray is the lowest rarity, green is the next highest rarity, then blue, purple, and orange for legendary, just like your commander coloring. Now, when you want to craft more advanced gear, you need more advanced materials, and those advanced materials are very pricey. In order to make one green material, you need to combine four gray materials. If you want to make one blue material, you need to combine four green materials. If you want to do one epic, you need four blues and so on. Um, a legendary is going to be four epics. So legendary materials are very, 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 very expensive or time consuming to create because it is so many more materials that are actually required in order to combine them. And I'll mention that if you're doing this for your first time, combining these things will have some quests initially, which will give you some additional rewards. However, be warned, once you have crafted them, in order to break apart higher quality materials, you are going to have to pay a non-trivial amount of gold. So I would only combine materials if you know you need them. In general, just don't combine your materials until you're ready to craft something because if you go into your blacksmith and you use this cool function in the game called the Quick Forge. It will show you exactly what combinations of things the game will automatically need to use in order for you to make this item. So if you see Ken Forge in green next to an item, it means that if the game combines things for you or opens up some of your material choice chests for you and chooses the desired materials, then you can in fact craft that item. And I do really like this function. Initially, I was afraid that tapping it once would just immediately forge the item. But no, it gives you this really awesome menu showing you exactly how it's going to break down what you need to go and make this piece of gear. Now, some of these patterns are, again, really easy to obtain and are very, very, very strong. An example of one such pattern is the Vanguard Halberd. It's a weapon that gives 9% total of cavalry stats. That is very, very impactful and powerful. And this is a pattern that you can get just for completing your quests. And it's also available in the Ceroli Crisis. With that said, other patterns 
offer very minimal or not even noticeable benefit over some other patterns and are much harder to obtain. One example of such a pattern is the Milky Way. Although this pattern is legendary, it's available only from the Soroli Assault, which is a rare event. And for a legendary item, it's really not offering that many stat points, which brings us to a really interesting concept that we need to talk about with equipment called itemization. Now, itemization refers to the allocation of stats on a particular piece of gear. And what we want to see is a lot of focus onto a single type of unit because the metagame in Rise of Kingdoms is not sending marches that have every type of unit in it. Typically, it is focusing in on one specific unit. So if I have an army like Minamoto and Cao Cao and it's all cavalry, yeah, it's really nice that this legendary piece of gear has 6% of archer health on it as well, but that does literally nothing for me. Zero benefit. So if I were to put this on Minamoto and Cao Cao, then the only benefit I'm really getting is the 6% of cavalry stats, which is 6% cavalry health, because that's all I've got in that army. And for combat, I really didn't care about the experience gain anyways. Compare that to a slightly different chess piece, like this Shadow Legion's Retribution. It's got slightly less cavalry stats, but more other types of stats, which is maybe a step in the right direction, but maybe not. What is an item that I think is itemized extremely well is the Isset's Sufferance Gloves. When I talk about brilliant itemization, this right here is exactly what you want to see on a piece of gear. 6% of cavalry stats. Look, if I'm sending marches that only have cavalry or only have infantry or only have archers, I want every bit of stat allocation to go toward the unit I'm going to bring. 6% of cavalry stats on gloves is really good at the epic tier. Contrast that to some other gloves that are available and... Like, look, 3% cavalry health and 3% infantry attack. Like, I'd rather have twice as many cavalry stats on the cavalry commander that I'm bringing to the battlefield, right? So I mention all of that in order to have the right lens for evaluating gear and looking at sets, which we are about to do, because when we embark on this journey, my friends, you are going to supercharge your commanders on the battlefield. Equipment is a part of this game that I truly love. Let's talk about how, for each type of commander, you get the best bang for your buck. The first set we're going to look at is Cavalry, and I love Cavalry Commanders. Who doesn't like running around on the battlefield with their Cao Cao, or Pelagius, or Khan, or Saladin? Or, if you are one of those terrifying rally leaders, you could be using Attila Takeda, and here is, in my opinion, the best set that you can create. Although there are many weapons that have cavalry stats, look no further than the Vanguard Halberd. Offering 9% of stats, and there's a set bonus, and it's only green, this thing is the literal dream for a dedicated cavalry march. Don't get confused by the Trial of the Lost Kingdom, which does give 10% of cavalry stats. That sounds good initially, however, when you factor in the set bonus, that you get from having this item and the other item from the set equipped, which is a solid 2% cavalry attack, you do even better yet again by using the Vanguard Halberd. The next slot we're going to look at is the helmet. And there are not as many options here, although there are more than there were originally when equipment arrived into the game. At the epic tier, you could look at the Abyssal Visage, but I would steer you away from this. As I mentioned about itemization, this is a piece that is really much better for defending a city where you have all troop types. It's rather expensive for getting only 4% cavalry attack. The chase item here is going to be the Expedition Warhelm. This is available to you from the Soroli Crisis using your currency from that event. You're going to want to use currency on this item and keep forging it and destroying it until you get the special talent, which is going to give you a grand total of 5.5% cavalry defense on a helmet. That is magnificent. Although I suppose you could start with a Helm of Fear, you do get this from Ian's Ballads and it is a rare drop, so it seems unlikely that the first thing you would forge is a Helm of Fear over the Expedition War Helmet. 
Continuing on to the chess pieces, I think that a great place to start is the Milanese plate. This is a pattern that you are going to have to farm battling Lohars. Great news, you should want to do a lot of that if you're in the early game in Rise of Kingdoms. The special talent on this piece of gear is going to give you a grand total of 4% of cavalry stats, which is very solid. You could also, however, start with the Infantry Breastplate, which gives you 2% cavalry health as a baseline. Special talent, you'd have 3% cavalry stats, which is good. But both of these pieces are green. I'll just point out that I'd rather have the extra stats. The advantage of the infantry breastplate, however, is that if you are battling barbarians, the 4% extra damage here is very, very nice. And if that's the primary thing you do with your cavalry, you can start over here. After that, the next best piece that I would recommend to you is going to be the Dark Lord's Blessing. This is something that you're going to have to farm up battling barbarian camps and keeps. I suppose these days it's just the keeps. This used to also drop from camps. And honestly, you could get this, or you could wait a very long time for the Revival Plate, which also offers cavalry stats, but comes from Ian's Ballads. Both of these are really endgame pieces. Just start with Milanese or Infantry Breastplate, and you're going to be in really great shape. I personally have avoided crafting the Milky Way, although it's got 6% of stats, which is really nice. The problem with this piece of gear is that it is really expensive for the amount of stats that you gain, and with the special talent on my Dark Lord's Blessing, I've got 5.5% cavalry defense. If I did get the special talent over here, you'd have 8% cavalry health, and that is very, very good. However, I'll stick with the 5.5%. Uh, of stats over here at a fraction of the cost for now. We'll see if I change my mind later on. Moving on to the gloves, there's really no question about it. At the epic tier, Iset Sufferance is a game changer. They are phenomenal. 6% um, of cavalry stats is itemized so cleanly. With a special talent, you get an extra 1% to each of those. For a grand total of 8% cavalry stats on a single piece of gear, this thing is the literal dream. Now, if you are in the earlier game making your way up to that, you could also do Windswept Bracers. This is a phenomenal item. You'd likely want to go for the set in that case, and that gives you 2% Cavalry Health and 3% March Speed. Special Talented, that's going to be 3% Cavalry Health and 4% March Speed. And the two-piece bonus is going to give you an additional 2% Troop Attack, which is very, very solid. Continuing on to the Pants, we're going to complete the Cavalry Vanguard set with the Vanguard Greaves. We looked at the weapon earlier, now we've looked at the legs, and this is going to give you a solid 5% of stats, which is really great. Um, it gives you the set bonus as well. Look no further than these pants, and don't get confused by things like Karak's Humility. You're better off just sticking with the Vanguard Greaves. Continuing on to the boots. Uh, we've got a couple options here. One is the edged boots. I started with these. They do have damage to barbarians. If you're in the earlier game, that damage to barbarians does really matter. However, after you've done enough of the Shadow Legion invasion to get the windswept bracer and boots patterns, I would definitely dedicate your first pair to some cavalry commanders. 2% cavalry health is certainly a step up from the edged boots, and the 3% march speed is very, very solid. Let's get a look at our next set, which is going to be Infantry. Infantry is very popular in the open field because a lot of people use cavalry and infantry counters that. Richard I is popular, and so infantry is popular, which means you're going to need some infantry gear. Some of the best stuff you can get is available to you just by battling in Canyon every day. You can get Staff of the Lost from Sunset Canyon, and you can forge and destroy this until you get the special talent. From that, you'll get 6.5% infantry defense, which is very, very solid. If you want to run around the map and battle barbarian camps and keeps, you can pick up a solid 5% of infantry health over here. And if you want to go all in on the special talent, that's a cool 6.5% health. I am personally using multiple of the Staff of the Lost, and I get a lot of value from this. 
I don't think really there is a better piece of gear that you could do. You could do a cheaper piece of gear, which is the Blessed Blade, offering 4% infantry health. That drops from Ian's Ballads. I feel like you're more likely to have the materials and the pattern for the Staff of the Lost by the time you ever get a single version of the Blessed Blade pattern. Continuing onward to the helmets, the best in slot helmet is going to be the Revival Helmet for 5% infantry defense. However, a great starter helmet is simply going to be the Iron Helmet, offering you 3% of attack, 4% with a special talent. Remember when I said in the beginning of this video that, quite frankly, the margin between a big spender and a free-to-play player is pretty slim? You get 4% of stats over here with a special talent, which you can guarantee yourself you're going to get, um, versus the Revival Helmet, which is going to cost many multiples more in terms of the amount of equipment you um, commit to that task, and you're only getting 1% extra of stats. And if you have the set, you get a little bit more boost too, but we'll talk about that later on. In general, I do feel that the Iron Helmet is a phenomenal starting point work with that initially. The next piece of gear we'll look at is the chest piece. I highly recommend the infantry breastplate. You get 3% of stats if you get the special talent on this, and I have personally forged and destroyed this until I got the special talent pretty much everywhere that I am using it. If you slowly want to upgrade, you can move your way up to Commander's Heavy Armor awarded to you during quests when you're forging things. Eventually, you could make your way up to a more advanced piece like Quinn's Soul, giving you 4% of infantry attack, or I suppose Shadow Legion's Retribution, but that's advanced and expensive. Honestly, start with the infantry breastplate, graduate up to Commander's Heavy Armor, and I personally have not even graduated up to the Commander's Heavy Armor. I'll show you right now, putting my money where my mouth is, my Richard I, Special Talent Infantry Breastplate. If I look at Alexander the Great, okay, I'm not using him as a primary right now, but I have that. My Guan, right, Infantry Breastplate. Just saying, that's what I use, okay? That gray helmet I was talking about earlier, I still use that too. It's really, really good. No shame in that. And let's go get a look at the next slot here, which is going to be the gloves. Now, you've got a couple options here. The starting point is going to be cloth gloves. They're gray. You special talent these bad boys. Boom! You got yourself a cool 3% infantry defense, and you can sit on that for a very long time and be happy. As you graduate your way up, the thing you're going to look for is the windswept bracers. You get 1% infantry health. Special talented, you get an extra half a percent, and 3% march speed. For open field combat, these are Phenomenal. 10 out of 10, would recommend. And because there's not actually a good infantry brute, you're going to end up using the Windswept Bracer set. We'll talk about that in a moment. Eventually, you could graduate your way up to the Revival Gauntlets. You would want to get the infantry attack of 3% on these. And eventually, you get the helmet. Boom. For the infantry defense, with that set, you're going to get an additional 2% troop attack, which is really solid. But that's very advanced. I don't even have that, and I'm pretty gosh darn far along with my gear. Start here, advance to the windswept, and you'll be in a really good spot. The next piece that I would recommend is, at a very cheap tier, you could work with Ranger's Trousers. You're going to get this by battling Lohars. I would recommend that you do that. Summon those Lohars, rally them down. You can get this and reforge it until you have the special talent. That's going to give you a solid 3% infantry attack. When you're ready to commit more materials to the task, I like Greaves of the Exile for the 3% infantry defense, 4% with the special talent, which you will get because these drop from Sunset Canyon. Easy peasy to farm these up. From there, you'll be looking to advance to Karak's Humility, for 5% infantry health, and if you can get the special talent for a grand total of 6.5%, that is looking really, really good. I would not get sucked in to the Ash of the Dawn, which, look, if you're using all infantry, you really don't need to go to the legendary tier to get the same amount of stats, especially because you have 5% health here and 5% health here. There's no reason. 
In a similar vein, Eternal Knight is only a piece of gear I would use for defending your city. Don't sweat that. Advance to here, and you have landed in a great spot. Moving on to the boots, the ultimate boot is the Shio's Return, offering you 5% infantry defense. But the great news is that most mere mortals are just going to land on Windswept Bracers, and I have not even forged the Shio's Return. I'm on the Windswept. Um, I get th- uh, I get 1.5% infantry defense, which is pretty solid, and I get 4% march speed because, of course, I have these special talented. You, too, will have these special talented as you play the game longer and longer and have more opportunity to collect this pattern from the Shadow Legion invasion. One last item I forgot to mention for infantry is that if you happen to get the Boots of Reverence, the 2% infantry attack here is very solid. Um, These come from Ian's Ballads. I haven't even gotten a set of these yet. Maybe you'll get them, and because the equipment cost is so low, you'll make these, and if you even got the special talent, 3% infantry attack is really great. In that case, you'd go and use the Boots of Reverence and the Cloth Gloves. But if you're doing open field, and a lot of people are, I do really like that Windswept set. Let's move on to the next set that we'll talk about, which is Archers. We showed you our Archer set earlier in the video. Here it is again, just so you can get a peek. I'm just going to point out we are still using two pieces of gray gear. That stuff is good, folks. It's really, really quite good. Let's go in and talk now piece by piece about the archer set that you want to build. We're going to start with the weapon. Your first weapon is really going to be a Staff of the Lost. Forge, destroy, forge, destroy until you special talent it for 5.5% archer defense. When you're ready, you'll graduate up to the Golden Age, also available from Canyon, but it is a very rare drop. I have only gotten two of these patterns in total, and unfortunately, I didn't get the special talent. I'm working toward my third so that I can forge it and try to get the special talent yet again. With the special talent, you are going to boost that archer defense very substantially. I think it's an extra 2.5% archer defense for a grand total of 10.5%. Archer defense from a single piece of gear. This is an amazing piece of gear if you can get the special talent. Continuing on to the helmet, the very best helmet is going to be the Revival Helmet for 5% Archer Defense. It also is a part of a set you'll want to use on this commander, which is going to give you an additional 2% attack. Now, I don't even have one of this pattern yet, and most players don't either. Us mere mortals stick to the Helm of the Phoenix. This drops in a number of places. You can fight Holy Sight Guardians all throughout the map. There's a small chance they drop it. It'll look like a rune, so you gotta tap every rune that you see when you defeat a guardian to see if you did in fact get it. And then you pick this thing up. Helm of the Phoenix is great. We have the special talent on it for 3% archer defense, and that is very solid. The next piece of gear we're gonna get a look at is the chest piece. Great news, everyone. You can get 4% archer attack having the special talent on chainmail, and it's gray. That is amazing. If you want to go all in, you can get 1% more uh, with the Revival Plate for 5% Archer attack total. If you're lucky, you get the special talent. If you're not lucky and you're just building the set, you'll get 2% extra attack after you've got the Revival Helmet and Chest Piece. And in my opinion, that is the very best use of the Revival Plate for the Chest Piece and the Helmet. Continuing on to the Gloves. My recommendation is if you can run around and battle the Barbarian Camps, you can get 2% Archer Health, 3 with the Special Talent. I haven't even been lucky enough to get the Special Talent on this yet, so I'm using this Untalented for 2% Archer Health, which is really quite solid. Eventually, you can graduate your way up, looking at something like the Sacred Grips, which gives you 5% Archer Attack which is a lot. However, the better legendary for pure archers is going to be Ian's Choice. Ian's Choice is going to take a very, very, very long time to farm during the Shadow Legion invasion. 
or if you're extremely lucky, there's a very, very small chance that this pattern will drop as the waves of elites are hitting cities. Overall, for archers, I would recommend Ian's Choice purely for the itemization. 8% archer attack is obviously better than the 5 from the Sacred Grips, and this itself is a very rare pa uh, pattern. It comes only from the Lost Temple Guardians. Continuing on to the Pants, I would recommend the Greaves of the Exile as a very solid pant for your archers. It's going to give you 4% archer defense with the special talent, which you're all but guaranteed to get eventually. If you wanted a cheaper entry point is the Ranger's Trousers. They give you 2% archer defense. If you are going all in in the very best of the best gear, you could look at something like Gladiator for 4% archer defense, and if you're lucky, it ends up being 5.5% uh, with the special talent. And if you're totally insane, Eternal Light is the best of the best on that front. Uh, if you get the special talent here, I mean, it's slightly more stats than Gladiator. Uh, but in addition, you get all the other stat types too, which you may not care about if you're paddling in the open field. You might care about in a garrison. Continuing on, let's get a look at the boots. The boots here are an easy slam dunk pick. Sturdy boots, special talent because they're gray and you can keep making it until you get that special talent. 3% archer defense is the jam. Eventually, you can graduate to Shio's return for 5% archer health, but this is legendary. It's going to take a lot more materials to get there. Okay, let's talk about a leadership set. What kind of gear do you want to put onto a leadership commander? And this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one because it depends a lot on what you are doing with that commander. I'll show you my Ethelflaed I use in Sunset Canyon. And because I use her in Sunset Canyon and I put almost entirely infantry onto her, um, I use gear that gives infantry stats. I've got a Helm of the Phoenix for infantry health. I've got the infantry breastplate for 2% infantry defense. I've got the Windswept set, which also is giving me 2% attack as well as the set bonus. I've got the Ranger's Trousers, and in addition, this is a weapon that you purchase if you're a high level of VIP. You could replace this very easily with a Staff of the Lost. So the thing that's a little weird about leadership is that if you're using leadership, then you need to select gear that really focuses in on whatever type of unit you expect you will bring. The only exception to this rule is some of the new-ish leadership commanders. A commander like Wu Zetian, for example, might be used to defend your city. A commander like the brand new Theodora and Yi Sun Shin might be used to defend your city. In that case, this is one of the few exceptions where you want the most stats possible because contained in your city is every single type of troop. That's right, every single type of troop is in your city. Now, if we were making a set that focuses on city defense, assuming we've got a leadership commander, or even if we don't, um, let's move through that really quickly and talk about some of your choices. The weapon choice is particularly interesting. You're going to start with the Staff of the Lost. However, if you can get your hands onto the Golden Age, that's going to be a step that is even better. And if you get the special talent on that, my goodness, is that a boatload of stats, more even than the Staff of the Lost, which has 20% of stats. Here, if you get the special talent on this, you've got a base of 18% of stats, and I believe it shoots up to like 24% total stats if you have the special talent one way that you can get enough patterns to do that is to hunt the very rare Heart of the Saint. I happen to have two of this pattern. It drops at the Ancient Ruins and Altars of Darkness in Kingdom versus Kingdom. It's very, very rare. I might try to forge and destroy this to get the special talent just to get the absolute most stats possible for something like defending my city. Most players shouldn't focus on that. Start with a Staff of the Lost. It's got a boatload of stats. It's going to be a great place to be. 
Moving on to the helmet, you definitely want the Revival helmet for City Defense. Why is that? Heck, the, the Revival set is going to be so good, giving you a cool 2% troop attack. Well, you've got all those types of troops in your city, baby. So that's like an extra 8% of stats when you've got Siege, Archers, Infantry, Cavalry all in your city. So I would recommend the Revival Helmet for defending your city. If you don't have it, then Abyssal Visage is very solid. And the budget helmet that you could do is a Helm of the Phoenix. Special talent this, that's 6% of stats total. Or if you've got an Expedition War Helmet, you could use one of those as well. You've probably already got one of these for your cavalry, and you could just use this in your city, especially because you're going to be probably overtraining on cavalry more than most other units. Continuing on to the chest pieces, I would strongly recommend as an entry point, you could use infantry breastplate or Milanese plate. The upper echelon is going to be that revival plate for the set bonus. I do think that set bonus is an absolute must. Continuing on to the gloves, you could switch over your Assets Sufferance from your Cavalry Commander to your City Defense Commander if you wanted. At the Legendary tier, Sacred Grips are amazing. However, I think the easier answer here that all players can do is the Windswept set. Why is the Windswept set so good? Because when you do this set bonus, you get 2% troop attack, and it doesn't care what type of troop it is. Because you're going to have Infantry Archers Cavalry Siege all in your city, that's like getting 8% of stat boost in total, which is really solid. So I would go with the Windswept Bracers for defending your city. Solid choice. For the Pants, you could go with something like the Eternal Knight if you are a crazy spender. However, most of us mere mortals will go with Greaves of the Exile, get the special talent, and call it a day there, an advancement from that will be the Karox Humility. Even without the special talent, it will offer you more stats. And a super budget play could be going for the Vanguard set with the weapon and the Greaves, but I would probably stay away from that. You could also do Ranger's Trousers as an entry point for City Defense. That is a much cheaper entry point than the aforementioned even Greaves of the Exile. The last piece here to round out your city defense set will be the boots. I strongly recommend the windswept set. So you'll rock these boots. 2% cavalry health, 1% infantry defense is very solid. And if we allocate this set bonus over here, which is 2% attack to all troop types, we could give 4% of those stats to the boots, 4% of those stats to the gloves in terms of our mental model for how we think about it. And this single piece of gear is effectively giving you 7% of stats, which is really solid. I suppose you would do better, however, with the Shio's Return and also with the Sacred Grips if you happen to have both of those, which seems pretty unlikely for most of us mere mortals. Let's continue on to do one last set, which is going to be Gathering. For Gathering, there is an astonishing amount of gear here. I'm showing you this set Mostly to point out that, yeah, you could use it for gathering, but look at the itemization on most of these pieces. There's a really astonishing amount of siege stats that you can get. Now, at the purple tier, this weapon is maybe the opposite of what I'm trying to illustrate. Really good siege itemization. Um, however, you get 6% siege defense, 10% gathering speed. At the helmet, look at this. 6% of stats for a blue and 5% gathering speed is really good. Chest piece, you have a similar story. 6% of stats, which is amazing, and they're all siege related, and 5% gathering speed. Gloves, you've got a similar story. Claws of the Forest Guardian, 4% of siege unit stats and 6% gathering speed. At the pants, you've got a couple options here. The one I would strongly recommend is the Coarse Breaches. They're very cheap to make, 1% gathering speed, uh, but 6% of stats and 5% gathering speed on these Harvester Breaches. At the boots, you can start with the Sturdy Boots. They're gray, easy to make. You can get the special talent pretty easily for 1.5% gathering speed. If you advance to the Harvester Boots, that's 4% siege stats and 5% gathering speed which is really quite exceptional 
overall. Let's talk now about our final topic, accessories. The accessory slot is very powerful. There's not a lot of easy to craft gear, and the easiest to craft gear is only barbarian related. Uh, one gives you experience, the other does damage to barbarians, and by the way, this does not work in Soroli or Ian's Ballads or any of those game modes. So I forged one of these, but I'm going to destroy it because I thought it worked in those game modes. It doesn't. This is an astonishing amount of team materials for just very, very little actual gain. So what are the really solid pieces of equipment in the accessory slot? Because there are two accessory slots here. And I'll say this. The accessories are primarily, in my opinion, for people leading counter rallies, rallies on structures, and also garrisoning structures. They are the captain of the garrison. Um, let's review the, these pieces of gear, and I'm just going to point out that these cost between two and a half to three times as much as an epic in any other slot. Take that in for a second. Take that in for a second. I could have one legendary or instead of that one legendary accessory, I could have three Shio's Returns. Or more realistically, I could have a Shio's Return and the Sacred Grips and the Ian's Choice as an example, okay? This is 40 materials in total, and this is 120 materials in total. Accessories are ridiculously expensive, and people get all worked up about like going to a barbarian camp or keep and they're like, oh, I really wanted to loot that, you know, that Delane's amulet or, or that pendant of eternal night. And it's like, were you really going to craft that? Like how many months is it going to take you to get the materials for that? Because I have not built anything in a couple months and I still am multiple months away from getting a pendant of the eternal night, even though I already have the pattern. So for perspective, I just want to set the stage that these are very expensive pieces of gear. Most players should not get heartbroken over chasing these down. But let's say you are chasing these down. Why would you do it? First and foremost, Elaine's Amulet. Reduces incoming counterattack damage by 5%. If you had the special talent, I think it would be 7%. Where is this good? This is good just about everywhere. When you deal attack damage, you take counterattack damage. But where is it busted good? This is busted good in a counter rally where, heck, depending on what they're rallying with, uh, let's say it's Alexander the Great and Charles Martel, which I think is a really good pair in season two of Kingdom vs. Kingdom, um, they only do counterattack damage to you because their normal attack damage is going to the garrison. So for your counter rally, Delane's Amulet is crazy good. Delane's Amulet is also crazy good as a second third, or anything beyond the first rally when you're multi-rallying a target, be it a city, a flag, holy site, whatever. If you are multi-rallying, it's possible that depending on what they're using in the garrison, one of the only types of damage you're going to take is counter-attack damage. They're not doing normal attack damage to you, and if they don't have area of effect skill damage, they're not even going to hit you. So incoming counterattack damage reduction is crazy good. This amulet was actually better in the previous version where it gave minus 10% incoming counterattack damage, but you took an additional 3% normal attack damage. It was much, 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 much better then, but it's still very good and it's easier to understand why this is good when there's no downside to it. The next piece of gear I want to talk about is the Silent Trial. Card up in the top if you haven't seen my video about this particular item. I won't go and harp on it. What I'll say is exactly what it does. It reduces the rage of the target by 10 points, and it says it can decrease the rage, but it does it every single turn. So that is as good as this talent right over here but in reverse, right? If you max this out, there's a 10% chance to grant 100 rage. Well, over the course of 10 turns, that's going to fire off probably once, and then you'll have gotten 100 rage. What does Silent Trial do? Over the course of 10 turns, it's reduced your rage by 100. So you can see how, as an equipment slot, as an accessory, it's very good, but very expensive to get all of that goodness. 
Where is this busted good? I would argue that this is busted good if you are swarming a structure, an Ark of Osiris. It's really good for counter rallies um, because that is reducing the effectiveness of the rally that you're hitting even more. Those are situations where Silent Trial is extremely beneficial. The next piece here is for gathering. I don't know who's making this, but it certainly is not me. I can't fathom a world in which this is worth 160 epic materials for 10% gathering speed. I mean, I don't even have the pattern. I don't even care. Moving on to the legendaries. Skolas' Lucky Coin. Card up in the top for my full evaluation of this item. 10% chance when you are taking normal attacks to get a shield for 500. I think that is very good. This is good on any commander that is taking attacks. Normal attacks, okay? Even for a second or third rally hitting a target, you could use something like this because the rally might get swarmed. You could use something like this because it's going to get counter-rallied. But I would, for a counter-rally, or, or rather for a second rally or multi-rally on a structure, probably stick with Silent Trial and Delane's Amulet. I digress. Lucky Coin, very good. Legendary. It's three to four months of materials farming, which is insane. And that's if you're very aggressive about your material farming. I think most players should not strive to make this, um, but it is very, very powerful if you do ultimately create it. Uh, this effect is kind of like a partial skill. If you look at a commander like, uh, let's say, Isun Shin, you've got right over here a shield for 500 and a 10% chance for that to happen on the last skill. So it's kind of like getting a fraction of a skill worth of goodness in an accessory slot. I would honestly like to see it be a little bit better than it is, considering the amount of materials and time that it takes. But this is all a win for free-to-play, as I was describing. The incremental gain for having these items is meaningful, but not insane, and it comes at such a high cost, it is honestly quite prohibitive. Another item that is extremely prohibitive in its cost, identical but different materials, is the Pendant of the Eternal Night. This drops from Barbarian Camps and Keeps, and it is adding 5% skill damage. That is active skill damage and passive skill damage as well. So even a commander like Alexander the Great on his second skill would benefit from this. So a commander pairing like Guan and Alex would be really crazy good for Pendant of the Eternal Night because there are so many skills they have that actually benefit from this, passive and active. 5% extra skill damage is quite good. There is no downside to this pendant. There was in a prior version. Um, so I think this is very, very strong. Uh, I think that for the new commanders, uh, Theodora and Yi Sun Shin, this could be very, very good. But we'll see. I'm saving up my materials to potentially go and make this, but I'm not going to spend on a big investment like this right up until we're ready to enter KVK or we're in Ark of Osiris League, if that happens first, um, so that we're picking a special talent, if I am so fortunate as to get one, that actually would make the most benefit from this item. It's extremely expensive. Most players should not even endeavor to collect the shards. And I say that not to discourage you from doing, you know, something that you have every right to go and do in the game, but because a pattern like this sitting in your inventory does absolutely nothing for your kingdom. In fact, I'm going to argue every one of these that you pick up that is not going to someone who actually could craft it and would craft it right now might be kind of a waste, you know? You know what I mean? Like, sure, you can sit with this pattern in your inventory like I am until you've got the materials to craft it. Or, like, maybe don't focus on this. Focus on all the other things that can get you more immediate value. Um, even a Delane's Amulet, which is very expensive, is more immediate value. Something like Silent Trial, very expensive, more immediate value. This is the sort of item that is... I think very beneficial for a rally leader, garrison captain, even a counter rally leader. In my perfect world, a counter rally leader would have Delane's Amulet and the Pendant of Eternal Night, or maybe even, I eh, take that back. I take that back. They would have Silent Trial and Pendant of the Eternal Night, and they'd have just an outrageous amount of skill damage, right? Like they'd be using something like 
Khan and if they need utility like Saladin or the, you know, something like that. Maybe even Attila to Kate. No, nah, not Attila to Kate. Don't do that. That's a topic for a separate video. We're going too deep here. All that to say, the accessories are expensive. If somebody else gets the pattern and you wanted it, even though you can't make it, don't worry. It's going to take so long to actually be able to craft this thing that like, You'll probably have the pattern before you have the materials to actually craft it. Expect to spend between three to four months. These accessories add a lot of flair to your commander, but at an extreme price. Focus instead on the baseline gear, which is going to get you the most incremental value, and then and only then focus on the pieces of flair, which are the legendaries that only add a teeny amount of stats for a massive amount of additional commitment. Hopefully you found this guide on equipment helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel for more crazy guides just like this one. We're going to include this in our Ultimate Guides playlist, which you should really check out if you haven't already. It is a course on how to power up, slay your enemies, invest in legendaries, way in depth, answering our most common, critical questions that players ask for Rise of Kingdoms. If you have any other thoughts about equipment or if there's something I missed, please leave that down below in the comments. Throw a like on the video. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.